Hi, I'm Adam and thanks for stopping by. In this video, I'm going to take a look at the strawberry for pie. What exactly is the strawberry for pie? Well, it's an inexpensive relay hat for the Raspberry Pi that will add cloud controlled functionality to your relay based projects. It has four onboard relays, the ability to control some of the GPIO pins on the Pi, as well as a temperature sensor. The relays that are fitted to this board are capable of switching 10 amps at mains voltage. Let's have a look at the underside of the PCB. I really like how wide these tracks are, especially if the relays are going to be switching high current. I also like the gaps that have been included to physically isolate the high voltage tracks from the low voltage side of the PCB. However, one thing I don't like is the position of the electrical connections in relation to the mounting holes. So the board would sit on these posts and get secured in place with screws. And the issue I have is that if you are using this to switch mains voltage, the screw head that's securing the board in place will be a little bit too close for my liking to the stripped wire with a chance that they may touch, potentially making the post live. I want to point out though that my device was supplied with just two posts. The posts in my Pi that you can see here are not the ones it was supplied with. This bag contains the two posts that it came with, so I'll probably just mount mine using two posts either side of the 40 pin low voltage connector. This way, I'll eliminate the risk of mains voltage touching any screws at the front of the board here. This button is used during the initial setup to create a Wi-Fi hotspot and you'll see me use this in a moment. So let's go ahead and connect this up. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. Note that if you have a Pi Zero, then there's a different Strawberry for Pi board available as this one is not compatible with the Pi Zero. Connecting it is just a case of carefully lining it up and then pushing down. Please note that for this video, I'm not going to bother securing it in place with any screws. Before I jump into setting this up, I want to show you what you get in the packet. You've already seen the strawberry for pie and these posts. You also get this quick start guide that shows you the basics. You also get this ID card. The ID card contains some important numbers, so it's really important that you don't lose this. It's basically your license key to use the cloud services which is why I'm covering this one with my fingers as I don't want to give away my license. Right, let's jump into getting this set up. The first thing you're going to need to do is download the OS for the Pi. So head on over to app.strawberry4pi.com and select Access Desktop. If you haven't already created an account, do this first and then log in. Now, we're going to scroll down to the downloads and depending on the version of Pi that you have, you can download the appropriate OS. Raspberry and Lite is for the Pi Zero, Raspberry and Minimal Pixel is for the Pi 2Bs and down, and Raspberry and OS Buster is for the Pi 3B and up. I'm also going to download the manual for developers and have a look at this outside of the video. Right, let me speed up this download a little bit. Now that the OS is downloaded, it can be written to a micro SD card, but first we must format the card. To format your micro SD card in a Windows machine, I recommend SD card formatter. The downloaded OS is compressed in a RAR file. This is not natively handled by Windows. So to extract a RAR file in Windows machines, I recommend 7-zip. There is also a portable version of 7-zip that doesn't require installing if you prefer. Upon opening 7-zip, navigate to the downloaded RAR file. Here you can see the RAR file. So just click the extract button followed by OK to extract it.
You can see that the extracted image file is around 8 gigabytes, so it's pretty large. Just remember to make sure that you use a micro SD card that's large enough. I'd say 16 gigabytes minimum would do the job. I'm going to use Etcher to write the image file to the micro SD card. It's nice and simple to use. Just select the image file. Ensure that you have selected the correct micro SD card and then click the flash button. Please note that this will take quite some time to complete, so again, I'll speed up this for the video. Now that the micro SD card is ready, insert it into your Pi and then turn the Pi on. When the Pi is fully booted, the blue LED on the Strawberry for Pi board will start flashing around about once per second. The initial configuration is carried out locally via a Wi-Fi hotspot. To activate the hotspot on the Pi, press and hold the button for six seconds as I'm doing here. Within a few moments, the blue LED will start to flash rapidly, indicating that the hotspot is active. Now you can join the Wi-Fi hotspot with your phone. Look for the SSID Strawberry for Pi and the password that you'll need to join this network is Strawberry. Since the phone is now connected to the Pi's hotspot, we must perform the initial configuration locally as we have no internet connection on either the Pi or the phone yet. So open up your web browser and navigate to https colon forward slash forward slash straw dot berry. In the case that your phone cannot resolve this, I noted that my Pi's IP address was 192.168.2.1, so you may want to try this. Note that if you miss the S from the HTTPS, then you'll be redirected to an HTTPS connection when you click the Start button. When you receive a message about the connection saying it's not private, just select Advanced and then proceed to straw.berry. It isn't that the connection isn't encrypted. This message is received because the Pi is using a self-signed certificate that isn't recognized by any of your browser's certificate authorities. Sign into the page using the username admin and the password admin. A security tip here is to always change default credentials. Please note, however, that I'm not going to be doing this in this video. We now need to enter the details from the ID card. So select QR ID card. Unfortunately for me, this doesn't appear to work. I'm using an iPhone 8 running iOS 13.2.3. It would be really great to know how anybody else gets on with this QR code reader. Please let me know below in the comments and also it'd be nice to know what model phone you're using and what version of OS you have. Since the QR scanner didn't work for me, I selected manual config ID and entered the details from my ID card here. One thing to point out is that the field names don't match the ID card, so you'll see I've mapped them on the video for you and they're displayed on the left side of your screen. After entering the codes, select Garda. That's another thing I've noticed. Not every page within the app appears to have an English option. Next, we need to tell the Pi the details of our home Wi-Fi. So select Wi-Fi configuration, and then if you want English, select this. You'll notice that in my haste to connect my Pi to my Wi-Fi, I missed the language option. Scroll down and select your home Wi-Fi from the list. Once selected, enter the password for your Wi-Fi and select connect, or as in my case, connector. You'll then see a countdown from 10. When the countdown is complete, the blue LED should now be solid and you may need to rejoin your home Wi-Fi on your phone if it hasn't done it automatically. You can then open the Strawberry for Pi app I selected sensors and it asked me to link a box. Here you'll need to enter the link code from your ID card. One thing I didn't notice at the time of recording was that I had made a typo when entering the link code into the Pi. As a result, the app couldn't connect to my Pi, so the current firmware is shown as NA. I want to stress that if you see this, then double check the codes that you've entered previously into the Pi, as this will save you a lot of fault finding time. You'll need to give your Pi, or box as it's called in the app, a name and select your time zone. 
The outputs on the strawberry for pie are called pins and can be given a user friendly name here. You'll notice another hint that the app is giving me that the pie and app aren't talking via the cloud yet. As you can see, the local IP is shown as unknown. Next, I created a new service called test and assigned pin one to it. By now, I had fully realized that the app and Pi weren't communicating properly via the cloud and I had to figure out why. Double checking the codes entered during the initial setup showed that I'd made a typo in the link code. So I entered the correct link code and guess what? Everything started working. As you can see, the app now shows the firmware version and local IP address of the Pi on my network. So let's see where I made the typo. This was on the local web UI of the Pi, so let's head there now. If you don't know the IP address of your Pi, you could either connect to straw.berry or you could look in your router to find its IP address. Clicking manual config ID takes us to the page that I made the typo on. The section headed current config will show the current GUID, serial and link key saved on your device. I noticed that I'd made a typo and typed the letter C instead of a letter G within the link key. I initially didn't notice this as the blue LED was solid as if the Pi had made a connection to the cloud services. Maybe the solid blue LED simply means that the Pi is connected to the Wi-Fi and not the cloud services. Anyway, once I'd corrected the typo and rebooted the Pi, all was good. So let's get on and see how it works. Before I jump into the app on the phone, I want to show you the local web UI as it has local GPIO control. Clicking the toggle switches in my browser controls the relays on the Pi and this is local, so there's no need for an internet connection. According to the manual, you can also send an HTTP GET request to trigger the relays, which may prove useful for interfacing into other IoT devices. Let's look at controlling the relays over the internet using the Strawberry for Pi website. Here are three pins that I've named, test, test2 and test3. I know, not very imaginative, but hey ho. Clicking the first toggle switch brings up the saving dialog and there appears to be a bit of time before the relay switches. Now let's look at the app running on my iPhone. Opening the service page shows that currently I have two of the relays switched on, which matches both the web page and the device, so this is a good start. Let's turn off the first relay. OK, that worked, but it didn't update the web page. Let me test this again, but this time put the phone in shot so that you can see me turn the relay off. Again, the app successfully turned off the relay, but it looks like the web page doesn't auto update, so let me try refreshing it. Now that the phone and website are in sync, let's try this the other way around. I have a suspicion that it will be the same, and that the phone is just displaying a web page within the app. Please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong about this and the way the app is working. So yes, the app didn't auto update to show the status of the relays. Let's try refreshing the app by pulling the page down. That's now showing the correct status of the relays. Well, that's the Strawberry for Pi all set up and controllable from the app on my phone. This is the first hardware revision of this product and it was released via Kickstarter. It doesn't have a massive company behind it like many other IoT devices. So taking this into consideration, I think that they've done quite a good job here at bringing it this far. However, I would really like to see a hardware design update that increases the distance between the relay electrical connections and the mounting screws on the corner of the PCB. Outside of this video, I'm going to have a play with the HTTP GET request. 
I think that they will make for a really nice and simple integration to any other software that's capable of sending a web request. Once I've done this, I'll add an example webhook into the description down below so you can give it a go on yours. Thanks for watching and if you've enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this. Bye.